welcome to another episode of TFL Leaderboard Hot or Not. As always, I've got my man Paul, our expert race car driver. And Paul, just give him a little bit of your credentials. Uh, I've been in the automotive industry basically my whole life. Started racing in 1989, uh, professionally on and off, and I work in the uh, film industry as well, TV commercials, and in the automotive sector. The premise of the show is very straightforward. You take a car, and today it's that car, uh, which is obviously not a new car. It's a 2002 Porsche 996 Turbo, and you take it around the track, you set a lap time, and I spend a week behind the wheel, and then we decide whether it's hot or not. I do it from an automotive journalist point of view, you do it from an expert race car driver point of view. Seems like a good idea. All right, well, <laughs> this is an interesting car because what you're looking at here is not the standard 2002 996 Turbo. No, it's, uh, it's been modified uh, with the Cobb access port there, and, and so the engine now goes from stock about 380 horsepower to the wheels to 455, and torque jumps all the way up to 540 pound-feet of torque, so pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, and um, Porsches are through the roof right now, right? There's this bubble. It's the car that we all grew up with. We had it on our wall, and the 996 is probably the last affordable Porsche. Uh, and this one is right around thirty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, thirty-five, forty, depending on the mileage. Yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. turbos are, of course, uh, all-wheel drive, mm -hmm. and they allocate up to well, it, it changes, but it can be anywhere from twenty percent to more to the front wheels. Um, and you know what? I've talked enough. Let's just go to the track and show them your uh, lap time. No, you know what? Let's make them wait for that. Show them your <laughs> zero to sixty time. Cool. Alrighty, we're gonna do a zero to 60 run here in a 2002 996 twin turbo that's been tuned to have 455 horsepower. So let's see how this car does. A little bit of RPM here. Alright, that's pretty fun. I like when you get an all wheel drive car to spin all four tires. That's a pretty fun thing to have happen. 4.52 seconds was the time on that. 4.52 seconds with probably a bit too much wheel spin. All right, so how was it launching that? Uh, well, it does. One thing that I didn't mention is it has an aftermarket clutch in it, and that thing's got a really short engagement point. It's kind of on or off. So I either got a, a launch with wheel spin or a little bit of a bog. I don't think I ever got that perfect launch, but it was still a mighty fast car to 60. Yeah, how about turbo lag? Uh, well, tuned, it seems pretty good. And, and that's one of the things a lot of times you'll get with tuning. Not only do you get big, more horsepower and torque, but you also have just better overall throttle response. So, so there was a little bit of lag, but again, at altitude, it was really, really minimal. Now, I did spend a week behind the wheel of that car, and what I found immediately was that it's a pleasure to drive. You know, it's got traditional steering. What I mean by that, it's not electric, so it's very communicative. Uh, it has tons of room for a big guy like me. The Germans know how to build a car that has space for big guys. And the, the rub on this was a couple things, right? From the A pillar forward, it's very identical to a Boxster of the same generation. And so people don't like those fried egg headlights. They don't like the fact that if you're looking at it from the rear view mirror, you think it might be a Boxster when in fact you're at the top dog portion of the time. All right guys, full disclosure. TFL car owns a 996 as part of our Project Porsche series of videos and so I may be a little bit of a fanboy when it comes to this generation of 911 um, and yeah you know this was the top dog well almost the top dog at the time and uh, it certainly is a little plasticky in some parts for a car that new cost over $100,000 it's starting to feel a little bit dated, a lot of small buttons, uh, kind of rudimentary controls, and um, the actual bits and pieces of the car that, oh god, that clutch is impossible. That clutch is just impossible. You know, that may be more than 20 pounds. That may be like, that may be like uh, pressing uh, 100 pounds every time I push that thing down. It's really hard. Yeah, and the other reason why they're Still a little underpriced is because it's the first 
water-cooled Porsche, right? Mm -hmm. And so people say, hey, I want the old air-cooled, I want the... But I'm thinking the first water-cooled Porsche has got to be just as good as the last air-cooled Porsche. Yeah, they're, and they're great to drive. I mean, that's something you certainly can't tell driving the car. There's a little bit different of a mechanical note, but you still have that great Porsche flat six sound. And, and of course, you've got that great hydraulic steering that you mentioned and, and all the fantastic things Porsche does from a chassis perspective. It's a great car to drive. Absolutely a pleasure. Well, okay. Let's... let's Whoa, a little bit, right? The, the the clutch on that thing, you need to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. So it's got a race-style clutch. It's very heavy, and it gets very tiring pushing down on what is basically like 20 pounds of, 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 of weight-lifting equipment. Right, yeah. Oh, it's, consider it like a, a Nautilus machine that's mobile, and then, it's a, again, it's a positive. <laughs> but if you got one that wasn't prepped for the uh, racetrack, you'd probably do very well with it. Uh, and the interior is very nice. You know, it's uh, expensive. It's... Um, um, I would say very stylish and uh, the rub on these cars of course was that they kind of took it down a level. I don't think so. I think especially in the turbo which was a top of the line 996 at that time. Uh, it, it was very nice. Yeah, it's very, very different interior than the 993s had in the prior 911s and I think that's where it gets its rep, you know, its reputation of people like, oh, it's not a real Porsche. But again, from the driving experience, the seating position, as you mentioned, you said it fits a big guy great. It fits me great too. So, you know, that's a lesson to some of those other manufacturers that seem to only be able to do one or the other. So it's, it's a good all-arounder. As you can tell, we, you know, we like it. So we have a, a race prep tuned car mm -hmm. and we have a racetrack and we have a race car driver and I was expecting great things from this car but I was a little surprised. Let's go to the track. This is not your everyday 2002 Porsche 996 Turbo. It is in fact tuned. It's a Cobb tune and normally this car puts out about 380 horsepower. Now it's putting out 455 horsepower and get this 540 pound foot of torque and that is at the wheels so on e85 with some go fast parts including a performance clutch this car could set the track record Some of the other go fast parts on this 996 are front and rear anti sway bars, and perhaps most importantly, right here, these are Toyo R888. These are very track friendly street tires. In fact, these are probably the stickiest tires we've ever had on this track, and they're about as close to a pure track R compound tire as you can get, and still have a car that can go on the street. Into the first corner, awesome bite from those Toyo Proxxas tires. Up over the hill, nice, whoa, this thing's fun. I like this car. Porsche 911 Turbo, amazing grip, balance, poise, responsiveness. The steering feels fantastic. I know exactly how much grip I have at the front. It feels like I'm driving almost a race car. Where it's that level of communication with the car. Great brake response, a little bit of ABS across the bumps, that's pretty normal. And the rear end, of course, just kind of moves around as needed. You can use that pendulum in the back that is a 911 to really point the car and launch you off the corner. So I love this launch that I get off these turns. I mean, you probably see me smiling right there. A couple more turns to go. And again, nice turbo response. The tin motor not only makes more power, but it's more responsive as well. So it builds boost quicker as you go. One more turn. And across the line, good power, a little bit of lag um, on the shift, but not too bad. It builds boost again quickly, but it, it builds boost pretty darn fast. Paul, oh, Paul, Paul, I thought you would do much better. <laughs> I'm really disappointed. How did that feel? It felt pretty good. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely, you know, I could, I, I think I, I'm a little sideways here and there, maybe more than I should have. Dude, I'm but, kidding you, man. It was fun. <laughs> you it rocked was fun. it. Did I? Yeah, track record by a long shot. Look at that. Oh. oh 101.57. That's like yeah, you two took it, seconds. Two seconds you took it down. 
That's you were amazing. On fire. Yeah, it was fun. Look at that. You got me all apologizing. <laughs> <laughs> Tricked me. <laughs> well, you know, I had to bring it down a little bit because you did so well. Yeah. Congratulations. All right, so I was kidding you. You know, I knew you had set a hot lap, and I wanted to make it a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit tense there for you. Yeah. Tell me about what it was like going around the track in the car. Well, it, it, it's one of those cars where the moment you, you, you turn the wheel, you know, I knew it was fast. Mm -hmm. You just knew. It had, it had great grip. It's got those R888 Toyo tires on there. Um, those things have, you know, it's not, a, it's not a track tire, but it's a very gummy, you know, streetable tire. And, and then it's got um, anti-roll bars in it, aftermarket anti-roll bars. And you just put those two things on a stock suspension, and it was amazing. And then couple that with, with that huge bump in horsepower and torque, and there, there was just no doubt it was going to be quick around the track. Now, when we do uh, this show, we do a bunch of laps. So you do a practice lap, we do a commentary lap, you do a lap to get the sound. And I was curious because the first lap was so fast that I timed all three and you went from like a magic lap to a little slower to a little slower so sometimes like the, you know the sun shines down yeah. and everything is right and that was your lap. And you definitely get you know turbo cars heat soak a little bit so so as as you do successive laps then your air intake temperatures start to raise up on the car and it tends to you know maybe pull a little bit of timing here or there and you you also uh, you know from the tires perspective and there was a little bit of a, a an issue with that car where sometimes when I when I was braking hard, and I started braking harder in those subsequent laps, I was getting the stability control was actually cutting back on on the car and, and kind of messing me up in a corner. So that was kind of messing with my lap times a little bit. Uh, but yeah, the, the car I, was just blinding fast. Yeah, and I think the reason for that was that Porsche decided to be ultra conservative. So the previous generation, 930 uh, Turbo, was known kind of as a widowmaker, right? Because yeah. it had that very um, unexpected snap over steer. And so in this generation, Porsche said, you know, we're going to build a turbo and we're going to make it all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive, yeah. And we're going we're to take the demon out and we're going to make it safe. And uh, the fact is that if you're a race car driver, you want to turn everything off because you could lap faster. The white gauges, of course, were an option and they're really um, snazzy and they pop. Um, everything is tight, nothing feels like it's rattling or vibrating or about to fall off in your hand. So even though the plastics can be kind of, well, plasticky, um, they are put together very well. And Porsche did in this what really is the first mass-produced 911 uh, do their engineering right. And that's what you'd expect out of a Porsche. Well, what I find most interesting is that we've done almost 10 cars now, right? Mm -hmm. And the one car <laughs> that set the track record by a lot, not by a little bit, right? By, we're looking yeah. two seconds, yeah. uh, is a car that is from the year 2002, yep. is affordable. It's one of the, the cheaper cars that we've done. Yeah. Uh, and it's tuned and it's freaking fast. Yeah. Is there a lesson there? there is, I, think, I think it's an incredibly important lesson. I mean, it, we, all, we all tend to, if we can, we tend to try and throw money at a problem. Not all of us have that, that luxury, of course. And this is, this is great hope for that, that, that there's a car that's hugely undervalued right now, I think, in, in all our opinions, uh, that with a, with a little bit of clever tuning with this access port, you get a good tuner to put tune on the car. You do very minor stuff, sw added roll bars and tires. I mean, that's about as basic as it gets. And you've got a car that's faster than really just about any modern car that's under 100 grand on the market today. All right, so the question, of course, of the day is, is it hot or not? It did set the track record, Paul, so what's your conclusion? I, I think it's, it's obvious this thing is incredibly hot, and then you factor in the money and it's an inferno. This thing's on fire. Yeah, man, it's red hot, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because for the money, yeah. uh, you get the pedigree, you get the speed, you get the reliability, and you get a freaking Porsche Turbo. It, it doesn't get any and better than that. you get all-wheel drive. Yeah. So I, I know you own an Evo, but... Oh yeah, this yeah yeah. This is the next step. I, I would actually honestly say that you know, an Evo at the lower price point kind of ticks all the same boxes, but this is faster still and better still. Yeah. So basically, for the price of a, a Subaru STI new, you can get a car that is faster, uh, is German, and uh, will just. Yeah. Your mind. I think it'll probably do 200 miles an hour if you left it wide open for a while. It's got enough power. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks for watching. This has been another episode of. 
TFL's leaderboard and a very special one at that because we did set the track, well, you set the track record. <laughs> We're a team here, Roman. We did it. <laughs> hey, I spent a, a, a grueling week behind That's the wheel. Right. It sounded like you were pushing that push. Yeah. <laughs> Please come back next time and we'll have more fun and fast cars to test. As always, this is Roman. And this is Paul. Saying thanks for watching and remember, check out TFLCar.com for more news, views, and of course, if you want to see the other cars on the leaderboard, in the nav bar, we've got a little link. TFL leaderboard, how to not click it, you'll see all the cars. See you next time. Ciao. I think we have a little bit of a disagreement because I spent the week behind the wheel and it was the most fun I had in a three-wheeled vehicle since the big wheel. Yeah, and like I said, I, I like big wheels. I have fond memories of big wheels, so don't don't ruin that with saying <laughs> this is like a big wheel. Uh, and, and yeah, my time around the track wasn't wasn't uh, quite as, uh, I think, as glowing. Let's put it that way. All right, well, let's start with the easy one. Let's go to the track and see what kind of a 0-60 time you got. Okay. All right, 0-60 running the Polaris slingshot. Let's see how it does. <laughs> 